Hey there! Today we'll try to figure out will Arma 3 perform well on an older generation PCs and what can we do to squeeze out that little bit of extra performance since the game is only in alpha and it's not really fully optimized as of yet. I know that benchmarks can't be done properly while recording so I also added few camera shots to the footage. First things first, I got pretty nice performance increase by using my old Arma 2 launch settings. To add these, all you have to do is right click your Arma 3 game in the Steam library and choose properties. Navigate to general tab and choose set launch options and paste these in. I will add these options to the description of the video as well. Next thing, I'm using dual monitor setup for myself. I got huge inf uh, FPS increase setting my Nvidia control panel settings to single display performance since I'm using SLI. And then I disabled my second screen while playing. Shortcut for that is window key plus P. And uh, you choose the relevant option. And playing the game in full screen mode rather than full screen windowed. Please keep in mind that this video will only show you how to get extra frames per second in a single player environment. Multiplayer still utilizes all the Arma 2 multiplayer model where you still depend on how well the server is built in terms of hardware and the software Come configuration. On, so pretty much later. anything you do here might not help you with FPS issues in the multiplayer at all. And finally for the in-game options, you want to start off with uh, some certain base setting. One of default settings will work nice as a base, um, then you start tweaking from there. Uh, at first I start with standard setting, game was smooth. Um, so I went ahead and chose highest setting. This looks much better, but this is also where the game starts dropping the frames. So I will be using this as a base to start tweaking from. First setting is visibility. This setting highly depends on combination of your CPU and GPU. Each object on a screen has verticals, textures, animations, normals, etc, etc, etc and they need to be calculated and then push the GPU to be rendered. The better the CPU, the more objects you can afford on your screen and the better GPU, the less it will bottleneck your CPU. Uh, Arma 3 is currently only utilizing about 40 to 60, 70 percent of the CPU power and the only way to improve this is uh, overclocking your CPU to give that that range like kind of little bit of faster processing speed. Um, hopefully Bohemia addresses this soon. Overall it depends on, on the type of map you're gonna play. Most of the times uh, 1600 meter setting is uh, more than enough. Uh, object slider is for how many objects to draw and this will also af uh, affect l LOD or l what it's called level of detail of those objects. Shadow is something you're gonna play around later, leave it to the last. In rendering tab, I found out that changing dynamic lights did not affect neither the picture neither the FPS, but that's probably just me. My best guess is this option will play higher role in night maps. PIP, or picture in a picture, this is detail of how vehicle dashboard mirrors reflections etc etc will work. You can disable it, it won't affect your gameplay at all. Anisotropic filtering is something you wanna play around with. This will define clarity of textures and distances with pretty pretty small impact to the FPS. HDR quality, leave it on standard. Changing this di did not affect my FPS at all. Instead, changing it to low made my game look really bad, so keep it on standard. Anti-aliasing, uh, this is a fun one. At current stage, I highly encourage you to leave it on at least to 2x. This will uh, force your GPU to take a load off of your CPU. Do not disable it just yet. PPAA, since you are using anti-aliasing, disable this, although this one depends on your graphics card. More outdated GPUs will emulate this off effect, uh, making pictures sharper with FXAA or blurrier with SMAA. Uh, newer GPUs have native support for these. ATOC should uh, generally not affect your performance, you can disable it, but the vegetation in-game will look really awful. I mean, like just awful, so leave it on. Post-processing. Highly depends on your GPU, I think. 
but you should disable it anyway. Uh, the game will still look pretty awesome without it, and it's a really huge FPS hog, and it's known to be an FPS hog since Arma 2 days as well. V-Sync, keep it disabled. I know there is a hot science behind this option alone, but just keep it disabled for now, since we're running very low frames here. If you have new newer GPU, keep it also disabled and set your NVIDIA control panel setting if that's if you're using NVIDIA card. Set it to adaptive VSync if you need it. This one will help you maintain higher FPS without screen tearing. Also, if your VRAM and memory clock is high enough, you might also want to enable triple buffering. It will help your FPS when adaptive VSync kicks in. In quality tab, first thing to do is disable clouds. This should give you at least 10 to 20 FPS, doesn't matter what GPU you have. Clown system is not very, very well optimized and it's an eye candy, pretty much for only for those who fly an aircraft. I kind of have this feeling that it's using <laughs> too much of CPU power instead of GPU, although that option should be fully utilizing GPU only. So this one does not make sense and you just change it around and see your GPU usage if you're using H HW info some or something like that. Keep particles on standard or higher setting depending on, G on your GPU, just test around. It only affects your FPS in combat. Shadow quality. This is a funny one. Most of people will freak out and you know just disable shadows. This is wrong people. Do not disable shadows I was shocked reading a blog where the devs of Bohemia were interviewed and they mentioned that pushing up the shadow quality will also take the load off your CPU. And to my surprise, a high quality shadow actually did give me an extra FPS. After setting this to high, go play around with your shadow di distance in a basic tab. This is where you tweak it to match your GPU in case you start dropping the FPS. Terrain quality is mostly CPU sensitive, but not much. It calculates coordinates of terrain's matrix. This is what's also called the terrain LOD or level of detail. The closer your camera is to terrain, the more polygons it draws. Uh, I think this also affects your amount of vegetation, not quite sure. Set the object's quality to your own liking. It uh, affects both GPU and CPU so it will highly depend on your own setup. And texture quality highly depends on your GPU, VRAM and memory clock. Overclocking your memory clock should help your VRAM just a little bit. Um, if you have 512 megabytes VRAM card, keep it low. If you have like 1 gig, I'd say keep it high and if you have 2 gigs Around 2 gigs or maybe over 2 gigs, just keep it on ultra.